Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday in Lent. It is good to be together to worship the Lord. Welcome to Sharon Lutheran Church, where by God's grace we are created to worship, called to teach, and committed to serve. If you are here for the first time, a special welcome to you. Please stop by our welcome center out in the Narthex hallway that way so we can tell you a little bit more about us and find out a little bit more about you as well. All are welcome at the table of Holy Communion. You don't need to be a member of our congregation to participate. Um, we have both wheat and gluten-free wafers available and all of the wine is non-alcoholic grape juice. Today we will be receiving a noisy offering and it will go to our roof fund. So that uh, is well needed. Please stand as you are able as we sing our gathering song, hymn number 338, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Covenant that they broke, 
though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read this responsibly. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love and your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Please stand for the gospel acclamation as you are able. said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it shall remain just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to, come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death that he was to die. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. You may be seated. This morning we'll have story time a little bit later in, our, in the sermon. 
Grace and peace be unto you from our God and Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today I have to be honest. For the past four days, I've wondered what am I going to say today? Uh, what am I going to share? What is the Holy Spirit leading me to say about our scripture text? And to be honest, I've struggled with what to say. I think that I have preached on just about every other lectionary text that I can think of, except this one. I couldn't even find an old sermon in my files from throughout the years uh, to share today. I don't think this is, this is an easy text to preach on. I think what is happening in the text is clear, but what else can I say about it? What can I say about this gospel text that applies to us today? What is the law and the gospel message for today? John 12, 20 through 33 is a holy week kind of passage. It happens in the gospel of John right after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday. This gospel text is somewhat of a Good Friday kind of text. And what I mean by that is that the point of John 12 passage and how we, or question Good Friday, are similar. Good Friday is a day that we remember when Jesus was ridiculed, when he was tortured and died, lifted up on a cross to die a horrible and painful death. And so you may wonder sometimes, what's so good about Good Friday. Why do we call it Good Friday? It should be Sad Friday or Horrible Friday. But the crucifixion of Jesus is not the worst thing. It's not the end. It's a horrible and sad death. But those who believe in Jesus Christ, it is the glorification of God. John 12, Jesus makes this same point. He tells his disciples and others who have gathered after his parade into town that his hour has now come. It is time for him to fulfill his role, for the Son of Man to be glorified. Jesus tells a parable about how a grain of wheat must die and be buried for a new plant to grow. Sundays and Seasons, an online worship resource says, in the Gospel, Jesus plants the image of the dead seed coming to life and bearing fruit. As a metaphor for his own crucifixion and being lifted up on our behalf, the Greeks asked to see Jesus. We might paraphrase Jesus' oblique response this way. If you want to see me, first look down into the dirt, then look up to the cross. Jesus tells about the purposefulness of his death. The Gospel of John is especially about telling and showing us who God is, who Jesus is, glorifying God. But we want Palm Sunday, Jesus. The disciples and the Greeks and everyone else wants Palm Sunday, Jesus. The one who came riding in on a donkey and people cheering and waving palm branches. Many people will come on Palm Sunday next week and they will skip Holy Week and come on Easter Sunday. Life is busy. I get that. But we also don't want to hear about death and pain. We want a triumphant king, one of Hosanna, not crucified. But you can't have the Easter shouts of He has risen without the betrayal, the commands and the prayers of Monday, Thursday, and without the crucifixion and the burial of Good Friday. You can't skip over the hard things. Like Peter and the other disciples, we don't like to hear Jesus talk about his death, and I get that. We don't like trials, pain, and sadness, and chaos. That's partially why this is not an easy text to preach on. But the Good Friday is a paradox. In worldly terms, 
Today's message from John 12 and the Good Friday don't sound positive. But to the Christian, to a believer of Christ, to Easter people, it is good news. In the hands of a God who can turn chaos into life, there is hope, there is good news, and there is love. This morning, I think of a favorite book of mine from childhood, a monster at the end of the book. In it, Rover does not want to see things continue on. He doesn't want to see and hear about the monster at the end of the book. He wants to skip over the hard things. We are sometimes like Rover and like Peter. We don't want to go through Holy Week and through Good Friday. We don't want the chaos. But in the hands of a God who can turn chaos into life, there is hope. There is good news. Sundays and Seasons also says this. Jeremiah tells us that God will come closer to us than a husband to a wife. Directly into our hearts. Deep in this mystery we will be known. Truly known. Even beyond our fear of being known and forgiven and loved. Jesus then promises that through his life in us, we'll be drawn into a similar emptying of ourselves as we enter into the rich lives of others so that they too will know the joy and relief of being known and loved. In this way, confession finally leads to mission. As Easter people, we have heard the end of Holy Week story before. And we know that we have nothing to fear. So it's important for everyone to hear the Passion story next week. The whole Holy Week story. And the really good news is that this is not the end of the story. Because Jesus died and rose from the grave. We are also part of his never-ending story. Part of his mission to share his story. The good times and the hard times. In John 12, verse 26, Jesus says, Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your love for us, for your life. We thank you that we have been not only connected to your death, but also to your everlasting life your forgiveness and love. We thank you for this day and we lift to you those that need your healing and your loving embrace and care. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
our ankle. Well, together we confess with the whole church our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit at the Virgin Mary, and he came to relieve human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God of the covenant, through the church you draw us into community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights and the welfare of children. We especially ask for peace in Gaza and Ukraine. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable especially those living in institutions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. Especially we lift up Kathy, Karen, Matt, William, Kay, Sage, Carol, Skip, Dale, Carrie, and Dave. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We remember the new covenant given to us in the waters of baptism. We pray for Penelope Jo as she receives this promise of forgiveness and new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us, especially Patrick, mission to, missionary to Ireland, whom we commemorate today. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, O God, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. In preparation for Holy Communion, I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with one another.
now at this time we continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings. <clears throat> God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy.
Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. These are the gifts of God, the people of God. Come to the Lord's Supper at the Lord's invitation. All are welcome. If you took a communion helping card, please uh, make your way to the communion table, and the ushers will direct congregation forward for Holy Communion.
I invite you to rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen you and preserve you to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Congregation may be seated again. I have some announcements to share with you. The first announcement that I have is that a congregational meeting to vote on updates to the Sharon Lutheran Constitution will be held on Sunday, April 7th at 11.30 a.m. in the Celebration Hall. A copy of the Constitution with the proposed updates has been emailed to every household in the congregation for whom we have an email address. If you haven't received a copy yet and would like to, paper copies are available out at the Welcome Center or you can talk and I'll make sure you get one. There will be a ministry fair on Wednesday, March the 20th, that's this coming Wednesday, from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m., right out here in the Norfolk hallway. Teams and committees will be sharing information about their purpose and asking for you to consider joining in their mission the Sharon University course on mental health matters is concluding this Wednesday evening. Uh, the last session will be from 7.15 to 8.30 p.m. in the lower level assembly area. This final session will cover suicide prevention. For more information, please contact Dave Berger. Easter flowers can be ordered until March 25th. <coughs> Please note on your envelope or check if the flowers are given in honor or in memory of someone. If you have any questions, please contact the church office. There will be an Easter egg hunt on March 24th from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock p.m. for children ages 3 through grade 5. Children must be accompanied by an adult or sibling age 16 or older. There will be no charge for this event, and there will be games, crafts, and treats, as well as the Easter egg hunt. Our Holy Week schedule, it's coming up. Next Sunday, we begin with worship at 9 o'clock and 10.30 for Palm Sunday. Wednesday, March 27th, there will be an interactive journey through Lent at 6 o'clock in the Celebration Hall. On Monday, Thursday, we will gather at 12 o'clock noon and 6 o'clock p.m. in the Celebration Hall. Good Friday, 12 o'clock noon and 5.15 p.m. here in the Sanctuary. And on Easter Day, worship at 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 10.30 a.m. in the Sanctuary and 9 o'clock and 10.30 in the Celebration Hall. If you would like to help with worship by setting up communion and uh, cleaning it up, if you would like to be a lesson reader or um, a, uh, an usher, please sign up on the sign-up sheets out on the, <clears throat> the, um, the usher's tables out in the hallway or you can go to the Sign Up Genius on the church webpage. I don't have a slide for this last announcement, but thank you to Lillian Esslinger, who stopped by this week to tell this church staff that there was an auction happening online through the ARC, the American, uh, the, the ARC, um, and they had some office furniture. We got brand new furniture, well, just it's used, 
but it looks brand new, for our church office for the whopping price, $12. There was, there was a crew of, of uh, staff people here yesterday, most of the day, putting in some volunteer hours, putting it, uh, taking it apart and putting it back together to fit our space. But we're, we're very delighted, so you might want to stop by and see that. Okay, that is all of the announcements that I have. Does anyone else have an announcement? We have one in the choir. Our Palm Sunday concert is next week. Yes! <laughs> yes! How could we have missed that? The Palm Sunday uh, choir cantata will be next Sunday. If you're coming for worship, you're going to, you're going to be graced with that beautiful um, music. And can I say that there's one piece there that's arra arranged by Jack in, in, um, as a gift to the congregation, especially for this event. So we're really looking forward to that, Jack. That's great. Okay, I do believe we are ready then for our benediction and dismissal. You may stand again as you are able. <clears throat> Beloved, you are God's own people, holy, washed, and renewed. God bless you and keep you, Show, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Our sending song is hymn number 545. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. Number 545.